The first thing that we're going to talk about is Huang Chin, Scutellaria bicalensis. So, um, Huang Chin is a Lamiaceae family member. We use the dried root in Chinese medicine. It's beautiful in flower. Uh, these are my pictures. Um, so, the first appearance. Uh, Huang Chin first appears in the Shenong Ben Sao Jing, the earliest Materia Medica printed in Chinese medicine, or the earliest extant one that we actually have some copies of, or, or a copy of a copy in another book. Anyway, um, Huang Chin also has the name Fu Chong. This is important to, to realize. Fu Chong means rotting intestines. <laughs> and so there'll be, what we'll learn later is a, one of the traditional quality markers for Huang Chin is that the central xylem should be decayed, like a rotting intestine which in a way is a type of um, uh, doctrine of signatures. Uh, moving forward, it's recognized as having bitter flavor, balanced nature, and it's non-toxic. Treats all sorts, in the Shenong Ben Jing, it says that it treats heat, jaundice, intestinal afflux, diarrhea, and on and on. It grows in river valleys. The, um, the first archetypical formula that Huang Chin is a part of, the Scutellaria bicalensis, is called Huang Chin Tong. It appears in the Shenong, it appears in the Shanghai Moon, which was written about 200, B, 200 uh, A.D. in the Han Dynasty. Huang Chin Tong is used for a type of diarrhea that occurs about a week after an acute illness. Um, Huang Chin Tong itself is composed of peony lactiflora, baixiao, Xisophis jujube, dazao, and Glyceriza urolensis or glabra or inflata gansao plus Huang Chin. This combination is used in a lot of further uh, evolutions of Huang Chin Tong that are either for dysentery or diarrhea or what we call a Xiaoyang condition. So we have evolutions of Huang Chin Tong moving into modern formulas like Xiaoyao Tong, Feng Feng Tong Sheng Tong, and Da Huang Zhe Chang Wan. Also, so what I'm trying to explain is that there's like a therapeutic fingerprint of Huang Chin that's been conserved for many years based upon going from the single herb to an herb combination to a formula, and that formula becomes a unit, which is then moved into numerous modern formulas conserving its function. This is how Chinese medicine has developed for 20 centuries, at least at this point. So, um, after talking, like, I'll go through a little bit of the historical figures in Chinese medicine. The first people, person I talked about was Shenong, Shenong Ben Sao Jing, the first Materia Medica. The second was the Shang Han Lun. Shang Han Zabing Lun was written by Zhang Zong Jing, probably the first really famous herbalist in Chinese history during the Han Dynasty, 200 AD. And then in a, in a later period, we get to Li Shi Zhen. So Li Shi Zhen is fun. This is at the Botanical Herb Garden in Hangzhou, which I visited to meet my friend there, uh, Li Shi Zhen. So Alicia Jen is the first person that talks about the differences between um, what you'll see in those bags is primarily called Zichin, which is a yellow, uh, more immature form of function, which is typified by uh, a lack of decayed central xylem. It's all yellow. And also, um, he talks about um, Kuchin, which is the material that's been harvested after the fourth year and has decayed central xylem. They're recognized um, later as having a slightly different function um, so we'll just kind of skip that part. Today, Huang Chin is seen, it's typically not divided in the market into Zichin and Kuchin, but it's generically looked at this way, the, the similar uh, taste and, and nature, functions to clear heat and eliminate toxicity, stop bleeding and calming the fetus. When we look at the growing regions of Huang Chin, the traditional growing regions are um, Hebei, which is like up here, right above Beijing, Hebei, and then uh, Shanxi and Gansu going down this way, and Inner Mongolia up here. So um, there's a certain kind of characteristic climate to that region. When we look closer at the material, we find that um, traditionally in Chinese medicine, we have an important concept called Dao Di. Dao Di is a, a Dao is the way, and Di is the earth. So this is like the way and the earth. It's the way of harvesting, the methodology of cultivation, harvesting, processing, in addition to the place, which means the climate, the sun, the temperature, and also the germplasm, which is located in that region. Um, the recognized location for the Dao Di medicinal materials of Huang Chin is Hebei. So Hebei, the, um, the highest quality of the Dao Di medicinal material is called Ruhe Zichin. Uh, which is located in Chengde County in Hebei. 
So what we want to know is what's so special about Hebei as opposed to Shanxi and Shanxi and everywhere else. One of the things that sticks out is that its climate's a little bit different where it's temperate, but it freezes in the winter. One of the things that problems I've run into is I've grown Scutellaria bicolensis in regions where there's no freezing in the winter, particularly in Seattle, it's just wet and damp and it's not so great. Um, so, um, we're like, well, what does it look like when it grows where it grows, where, what does it look like in the Dao Di region? You know, with the Dao Di region where it grows wild and cultivated, we see sun exposed black grass, grass slopes, wastelands and grasslands. Uh, Huang Chin kind of prefers, it doesn't really want a cultivated bed, you know? Like a wasteland is a good idea to visualize where Scutellaria bicolensis should grow. Prefers a temperate climate, but it needs, it wants a freezing winter. It's good with sun, it can endure drought. It is fine with a lot of cold and it can do okay in shade. Um, 